And joining us now, thankfully, after a five-hour marathon baseball game, is energy. assistant coach Trent Pratt. Yeah, he needed a few of those uh, to get through that BYU-Utah contest. Uh, Trent, welcome to Studio B, man. Yeah, Trent. Good to be here. What's the toughest thing about coaching in that type of 13-inning game? Oh, man, I think just those emotions of the game. I mean, that was up and down. You get a lead, you give it up, you know, then you take the lead again. I think that's the biggest thing is just the emotions of the game and just the back and forth. What was the emotion like in the locker room after that? Because you want to beat Utah, yet you're exhausted, probably, physically, emotionally. <laughs> I think I sit in the locker room and I told Coach Littlewood, I go, I don't, I don't really want to go anywhere. I just kind of <laughs> want to just sit here for a while. I don't, feel, I don't feel like getting my keys. I don't feel like getting in the shower. I don't feel like doing anything right now. I just, kind of, I just want to sit here. You came from there, I think. You were still sitting yeah. at Miller Park, and then you walked over here, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you need to decompress after a crazy game like that. Um, what did Utah do to cause you problems last night that ultimately resulted in a win for them? Um, I think the, re the relievers that came in threw the ball really good. I mean, we had chances, and, man, they made a couple big pitches that, that got them out of jams. And likewise, I mean, we got ourselves in some jams, too, and our guys did a great job making big pitches. It was just one of those things where it's going to come down to, hey, well, someone's going to get a big hit, someone's going to make a big pitch, and that's who's going to win the game. And unfortunately, it was, it was them. You have Portland coming up uh, tomorrow and this weekend. So how quickly do you shed this result, or does it stick in your craw a little bit because it's Utah? Oh, it's over. So, it's over. <laughs> it was over right when you walk out the door. I mean, you might feel bad for a little bit after the game, but, man, once you walk out the door, it's over. And I was up early this morning working on the finishing the Portland scouting reports and getting ready for tomorrow. That's the wonderful thing about baseball, too, is, hey, we got – more games, man. Let's go. Yeah, it's not like Move football. You don't, have, you don't have to wait a week. A we, week. We'll wait a day and come back and play. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> Top 10 nationally, BYU is in batting average, run scored, and slugging percentage. What has led BYU to becoming this consistent offensive power? we got good players. I know at the end of the day, it's, it's not coaching. You have to have good players. You know, if you have bad players, it doesn't matter how good a coach you are, you're not going to win. <laughs> <laughs> we have good players. we got guys that – work hard and, man, are really talented. And they put in a ton of time, and the show's on the field. You are the hitting instructor. So how have you helped shape uh, a mindset and a better plate approach this year? Last year it was good. This year it's even better. I think it, we got some guys that are back from last year. I think that's the big thing, and that approach just carried over. You know, we had some guys that maybe struggled early that are, are going really good right now. So I think that's the big thing, it's just guys that are back and – they bind to that approach, and young guys watch the older guys, and I think that culture just kind of breeds every year. As the hitting instructor, could you step in, let's say, against, I don't know, Maverick Buffo and teach him a thing or two? I don't know. I wasn't a very good hitter. <laughs> Maybe that's, probably, that's why I'm coaching now. I couldn't really hit. So, <laughs> What are your thoughts on the rally caps from last night? Because those were – almost as impressive as the game. Yeah, what do you think about them when that's happening? Dude, it's crazy. I don't see them during the game. Like, I, until I looked at Twitter last night, I saw them and was like, man, I think they're awesome. I'm looking at them right now, and it's like, <laughs> I think it's great. I think that's one thing great about college baseball. I watch college baseball games, and, and they kind of show things in the dugouts. That kind of what separates it from the big leagues. It's, man, guys have a ton of fun, and I think, it, I think it's great. Maverick, when did Maverick start this? Like, and why is he the guy? <laughs> that's donning catcher gear backwards with upside down glasses. You know, he's really upped his game because it used to be just stack the hats. Yeah. I mean, it was like, I guess that got old. That wasn't good enough. So, I mean, I don't know why he's the guy. Maybe he's just the goofball that he thinks of it and, or he's the one that dares to do it. I mean, who really knows? And I'll have you, to ask Mav that today. You've been in the game a long time. <laughs> have you encountered someone with a better name than Maverick Buffo? Like, that's up there, right? Oh, it's got to be in, definitely in the top five. Off the top of my head, I don't know if I can think of a better one. That is such a great baseball Amazing. name. Amazing. It's a great name altogether. Yeah. 19 wins now in the last 23 games, even after last night's loss, which is a remarkable run in a sport that is as delicate as baseball when it's inches and bounces. What changed for this team when the Cougars were 10 and 11, one game under 500? You know, it's tough to say. I think we had a couple guys early that, that offensively that struggled. I think we always knew we were good. And we were talking as coaches the other day, we were like, Man, we know we're really good. I don't know if those guys believe it yet, but even when we were 10-11, didn't feel like no one really panicked. It wasn't like, oh, man, we're in big trouble. It, we just expected it to happen. And once you got Tanner and Colton Shaver and those guys, you know, doing what, what we all know they can do, that kind, of, uh, that, that kind of flipped it, especially offensively of us 
scoring runs and getting going a little bit, those two guys, when they started turning the corner, I mean, we started to roll a little bit. What's the latest with Kyle Dean? You know, I'm not sure. I know that his back was sore. I haven't heard today. So we'll find out tonight and tomorrow. How much does that affect your roster and lineup when you have a guy that was swinging a red-hot bat and – in my opinion, is an underrated center fielder who does a really solid job out there. So how much did that shakeup affect you yesterday and, and moving forward? I think it shakes up a little bit. But, you know, the best thing is we got guys that are just ready to play. You know, it's, you can't worry about that. Hey, you know, like the Patriots, next man up. You know, one guy goes down, hey, the next guy's ready to play. And you see the great job Nate Favero's been doing. You know, Bronson's been playing left field. Mm -hmm. Luckily, we got guys that are just good baseball players that we can move guys around. It, you know, it shakes up the lineup a little bit. But at the same time, it's – Man, not something you can worry about. We can't control it. So the next guy, step in and get ready to play. You've been a part of some intense rivalries. You played at Arizona State and Auburn, so Arizona and Alabama there. Now BYU-Utah. <laughs> How does BYU-Utah compare to some of those rivalries? Because I know those are pretty intense. Yeah, and it's up there. Um, it's definitely up there. The Auburn-Alabama rivalry, that was different. There was a lot of hatred there. <laughs> I remember, man, my, my last year we got walked off the field two nights in a row at Alabama. Oh. And you, you, once you finally get out of the field after everyone yelling at you as you walk off the field. And then when you go through the gate, they're waiting for you outside the gate, too, lining the bus. So it, it can be – The fans? The fans, yeah. Yeah, they don't like us too much. So – but it's fun. You know, last night, I mean, I love the BYU-Utah rivalry. I mean, that was a great game. Um, the coaches there are great guys. We have a good relationship with them. So, man, it's just great. And that game last night – I mean, all the games we play, it seems like they play a lot of close games with them. So it's a lot of fun. Should BYU have something like War Eagle? We got Go Cougs. Go Cougs. Don't we have that? Yeah, yeah, kind of. that's there. Yeah. That's there. Rise like, up. Like, like more of a like if you you're in the middle of nowhere, you see another BYU fan, it's like I think it's Go Cougs. Yeah. And then the Washington State fans like what? Yeah. So, <laughs> Houston like huh? We we <laughs> just got to get it going. We just got to get going. Okay. I know to this day if I'm somewhere I, where I had an Auburn shirt on, I'd be in any airport and someone yelled War Eagle. War Eagle, yeah, it happens. Pretty crazy we stuff. We just got to keep it going to BYU. Yep. That one's just been around longer. I wish we had a TV show to like promote. Yeah, I know. This idea. Shoot. Like, I wish. <laughs> we should work wish. on that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we'll too, figure it out at some too point. Too bad. Maybe that's your guys' fault. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Probably. We should probably take some of that accountability and responsibility. Trent, great to talk to you. For what it's worth, I know you don't have it now, but you still to this day have the best mustache that I've ever <laughs> seen of any man on BYU's campus. That's And that's a shot at Tom Holm. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, BYU back to work against Portland on Thursday. We would like you to sign our stretch Y flag. Let's give you some BYU Wait. Sports Nation karma for that series right, against the Pilots go. as well. We're looking for a former Auburn baseball player, <laughs> so we're really happy. You hey, you did it! Jeremy, you found him! We've, uh, there he is. Trent you Pratt. did it.